Hello, good evening and welcome to this uh, this evening's webinar on T-Levels, the final uh, webinar on T-Levels this week. And we're looking at the accounting and business pathways. So joining me is my colleague Helen Drury and she will be explaining the ins and outs of this T-Level. So if you have any questions, do ask them as we go along. You've got the Q&A uh, option at the top of your screen, hopefully. You can select that and type in any questions you have. And do remember there is a slight delay. There's a sort of a 30 seconds or so delay before um, what we're saying is reaching you. So if you do have a question, do get it in. So we wouldn't want to cut it off our, at the end accidentally. So um, let's uh, cross over to Helen Drury. Good evening, everybody. I'm Helen Drury. I'm the lead for T-Levels in the college. So I'm here to talk to you about accounting, which is one T-level in itself, accounting and finance. And the second one is business and management. So uh, they're two separate uh, T-levels. Um, in terms of what I'm going to talk about, I'll talk about the T-level overview, the pathways, uh, separate T-levels, and why would you choose Farnborough, and the progression routes that you could go on to after the T-level and how to apply. So the T-levels were introduced um, due to skills gaps nationally at uh, post A-level, post T-level, post um, 16 to 18 education. So they are technical levels in line with some European countries where there's a lot more vocational education than A-level and academics. So take Austria 70 percent great and the UK is 30. As Sorry, Austria is 70 vocational, 30 academic like A-levels and we're the other way around. So the government consulted with employers and they asked employers what they need in order to meet skills gaps. So this qualification is a two year programme for 16 to 18 year olds, equivalent to three A-levels and it's very industry relevant um, meeting all the needs of employers. So within that T level over the two years, and it is a hefty qualification, it has more, more uh, guided learning hours than any other qualification, as in contact hours in the classroom. There's also a 45 day placement where we, the college, support um, your child to have a meaningful placement within a relevant employer locally, or at least within 25 miles. And um, we do make sure that the placement fits the students. So we, you know, we hold meetings before the placement to make sure that the objectives of the employer matches with the objectives of the students and that it's relevant to their course and they know what they're going to be doing for that period of time. And that um, you know, they've met and they know if there's an outcome, whether it's a project or something that they work on with the employer and they know what they're going to be finishing up with at the end of their placement. So in terms of accounting, accounting and finance, so these are the two pathways available. So it's obviously covering the financial principles and concepts, understanding professional conduct and the skills, analyse and present different types of data and you would choose either accounting or finance. So in the first year, students do their core. So they would be together looking at core content, which is theory and then putting obviously the theory into practice within the placement. So at the end of the core content, there are three exams. Two are set by the awarding organisation and the third one is an employer set project which is done and examined over a period of time so it may be 14 hours and you do it two three hours at a time in a computer room so it um, is three exams at the end of the core year and three at the at the end of the second year and the careers that the accounting and finance t-level leads to are as you see on the screen roles such as finance officer, accounting technician, 
payroll manager, payroll administrator, these are the ones that have been identified as skills gaps. In terms of finance, so in the second year, students choose one specific occupational specialism. So they do their core year in year one, and then in year two, they choose one of these pathways, retail and commercial banking analyst, investment banking and asset and wealth management analyst, insurance practitioner and finance, financial compliance or risk analyst, so that they these are the skills identified by employers that are needed to fill those gaps. So these lead to the roles that you see at the bottom of the screen. So business, business and management is the T level, a separate T level. And again, you will have your first year, which is your core content. And again, you will cover business, such as project management, organisational cultures, business behaviours, and it will lead to again three. There are no, there's no continuous assessment. It will lead to three exams, two two exams set by the awarding body, and again the employer set project set by the awarding body, which is taken over time, two three hours depending on what's set to cover that on a computer. And then in terms of the second year. Students would choose. Business support. As a part occupational specialist pathway in year two to support the running of an organization or business improvement where they would analyze data to, to identify opportunities for improvement and team leadership and management. Through development of management. And de development of teams. And individuals. And then the related careers related to business and management are there. And these are the gaps that have been identified. To fill at level four, post A level, post T level. So why would you choose to come to Farnborough? Well, we've been running. We're one of the first colleges to deliver T levels since September 2020. So we've been delivering in digital and other areas since then. So we've already set up well established connections with local employers. So I'm working with a co company in, in um, Guildford already. We've just taken one of our students uh, on an apprenticeship and working with some accountants here in Farnborough as well and with the local authority. So we have employers already on board. And uh, our lecturers are recently been in, in industry. We have one who's just uh, sold his company, for example. So he so it's about bringing recent industrial experience to life in the classroom so that everyone's current. And we've developed really fantastic dedicated facilities for all our T level subject areas with specialist spaces, even for business, finance and accounting. And there's the block where we deliver our business and finance. It's called the Emerging Technologies Centre. Where we have uh, also technologies, new technologies such as drones, VR, AI, hence the name. And then at the bottom is a typical space that we use in the middle where students can study with the use of laptops from laptops trolleys that they can access with their student ID. So what can students do after the T level progression wise? So. T levels are, are good to get a skilled occupation. I, I mean, I'm finding students finishing from the September 2020. They're finishing this summer. They, a lot of them are looking at level four apprenticeships or they've been offered apprenticeships from the industrial placements or they're looking at going on to a job or a degree at uni. Or any sort of higher level technical study following the T level. We also offer degrees at University Centre Farnborough, which uh, we will increase as we 
deliver more and more T levels, there will be more and more progression routes in order to be able to stay at, at, uh, at Farnborough College of Technology. And these are some of them. We have we offer a fast track degree over two years where students can achieve a degree in a faster period of time. Um, which is business management. We offer business and events and business and psychology. So these are the UCAS points in order to go to university. So they are recognised by a higher education already. We have got students in childcare and education who will be moving on to university from the T level. So more and more universities are acknowledging T level and by the time uh, a student finishes the business and management or finance and accounting, there will be more and more universities aware and, and taking on more and more T level students. But this is the first year that business and accounting finance, business and management finance and accounting will start nationally is in September 2022. So it's nationally the first cohort that will be delivered. So how do you join? So it's just about going to our website, which is farn-ct.ac.uk and search for the T level that you're interested in in the search or go straight on to T levels and add the course that you want to do into your basket and follow the steps to apply. You'll then be contacted and you'll be invited for a short interview. This is usually on Teams. And then we are offering summer college in June where I'm arranging for some of the employers to come in into summer college. And then you enroll in August when you've got your GCSEs um, grades in order to be able to come in with the uh, evidence of those. We do ask that for T levels you have English and maths grade four to nine in order to be able to cope with the course, especially in finance and accounting where you're doing maths from the beginning in terms of accounting maths, obviously. So if anyone has any questions, happy to answer them. Just uh, while we're waiting, because we've got that slight delay, um, Helen, is there any major differences? What would you say the, the major differences are between um, the sort of the older BTEC that was similar to these or the, the sort of the AAT accounting qualification? Is there any, you know, particular things people should know in terms of differences? So in terms of content, I mean, all the content is covered in the BTEC and the T level. I think the major difference is obviously the 45 day placement and the um, the exam based is T level and the uh, BTEC is obviously continuous assessment through assignments that are set and and having to be handed into a deadline throughout the two years. So are these uh, would you say these are a good option for people who are considering A levels? Um, yes, absolutely. I think if you, I think students who choose T level, it, it gives them the subjects that they want within a specific, not having to choose two A levels that you really want and then another one. It gives you the all round package. If you wanted to go into accountancy, you would choose finance and accounting. So it gives you that all round experience as well as the, um, the placement, which will possibly give you a progression route into that company. But it was all, will also give you hands on experience in um, supporting what you need to do for the end of your course. And in terms of um, class sizes, is it kind of, would you say it was similar to school where people might have 28, you know, 30 people in a class or is it uh, different to that? I mean, T levels depends on, they vary in size, but at the moment, finance and accounting and business and management will be small groups. So um, it will be, you know, a lot more atten attention paid to each individual student. So I think it's a really good option to join at this time. Perfect. And in terms of that placement, um, when when would that happen in the court during the course? Did does it, is it throughout the whole course, or would it be in a block, or in one year over the other? 
Well, we have different models for different T levels. So obviously students need to get their core knowledge before they can be productive you know, with an employer and be able to support them with their work. So we do aim to cover the majority of the core. And we also need to arrange the placement around exam dates that take place in the academic year. So uh, at the moment I'm going to start talking to employers about perhaps one day a week as soon as students have enough knowledge and then a block in the second year to to top that up to make sure that the 45 days as a minimum are covered. OK, um, we we haven't had any questions asked, so it must mean that um, we were quite comprehensive in the information that we've given. Um, but if anybody does have any questions following this, if they have any thoughts that come up, um, you can go on to the college website and ask them via the course page. So if you find the T-level pathway that you're interested in, there'll be a button there that says ask a question. Um, you can send us uh, direct messages through there so we can get back to you. Um, it's also the same page that you can um, make an application from, so you can kind of add it to the course basket from there, as well as see all the individual modules and units that you'd be studying. Um, so I think what we will do is close this uh, call off then, because we've got no extra questions. Um, but if you do want to uh, catch anything from the beginning of this uh, presentation or watch anything again, we will be uh, recording these and putting them uh, onto the website before Easter so that you can uh, watch this one as well as the other uh, three that we held um, earlier in the week. So it just leaves me to say thank you very much to Helen uh, for presenting that information and we hope to see many of you in September. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks, Helen. Bye-bye.